Good morning, friends. It's Sandra Clay. I'm the pastor at Cooks United Methodist Church, and I am so glad that we could have this time together. A big hearty welcome to those of you who are joining us on a regular basis, and to those of you who are just now finding us, who are searching uh, for words of encouragement, for words of challenge, for companionship. Uh, we want to be able to do that for you, and so if you um, are intrigued, encouraged, if you are companioned by what we share, we hope that you'll um, follow us, like us, subscribe, whatever it is that you, um, that you need to do, either on Facebook or YouTube. Um, <clears throat> these are difficult, difficult times we're navigating, if only for the fact that we've never been in this place before. Uh, we've been in election cycles before. We've dealt with uh, the threat of disease before. We've dealt with uh, tornadoes um, before. Um, but all together impacting one another. Uh, and so perhaps in no other time that I can remember in my lifetime, and it's probably the same for you, we need one another. We need true, honest, godly community. <clears throat> That's our only hope in sharing this together is that you would know, my friends, that you are not alone. Uh, and we go to God's Word together to help ourselves uh, understand God better for sure, but also to understand ourselves and to find a way to express. Um, and that means then sharing with the expressions of others. So however you found us today, we hope that you know this, that you are loved and that you are not alone. Uh, we've been studying this week Psalm 96, uh, which is a psalm of exaltation. It's a psalm that's unique to many because it's not attributed to David. Um, and it starts with an admonition to sing to the Lord. Uh, and we acknowledged on Monday that's a little difficult for church people. We're so worried somebody's going to think our voice ain't good enough. That we forget that the audience is God not our neighbors and so we're brought back to that uh, that truth in the last four verses of the psalm <clears throat> and so I want to begin by reading those four verses but as I do uh, if you have your Bibles in front of you I I'm gonna ask you to listen instead of read along with me because I want you to pay attention to the many times that you'll hear the psalmist refer to um, a part of creation. Um, and I want you to think about the difference between earth and world, if there uh, is implied one for you. And the we're really heavy in that last verse um, about God coming with intent and purpose so I want you to be hearing what the psalmist is saying God's purpose among us is. And those are the uh, major issues that we're going to tackle so that we can sing this song in our own souls. So here we go. Psalm 96, I'm beginning with verse 10 and reading through to the end of the uh, psalm. Tell the nations, the Lord rules. He set the world firmly in place. It won't be shaken. He will judge all people fairly. Let heaven celebrate. Let the earth rejoice. Let the sea and everything in it roar. Let the countryside and everything in it celebrate. Then all the trees of the forest too will shout out joyfully before the Lord because he is coming. He is coming to establish justice on the earth. He will establish justice in the world rightly. He will establish justice among all people fairly. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Uh, it's good, good news, but it is not just a, a prophetic or an apocalyptic declaration apocalyptic meaning the end of one age the beginning of another uh, this psalm was written for admonition and encouragement for those 
who recognized um, the Almighty as the one true living God. So let's, uh, let's begin this way. In verse 10, uh, we get um, the, uh, we're supposed to tell the world, those who believe it, those who know this is true, you've got a job to do. Let's tell all, uh, every nation, let's tell all the nations the Lord rules. Now, rules is uh, probably uh, more... Uh, that's the word we understand in our vernacular, but it's a fair translation uh, for us to go to the Lord reigns, already reigns. The Lord isn't coming to reign. It's in God's reign that all that stuff at the end of this passage will appear. So when we think about um, the word reign, R-E-I-G-N, that's a reference to royalty. And so uh, later in the prophets, we'll hear, especially in Isaiah, uh, God, especially God's suffering servant, whom we know to be Christ, a uh, Jesus Christ, uh, is the king of kings, king of all kings. Uh, God wanted in, intentionally, he, it was his desire that he be the king of all people but we kept saying no we want to we want a king like everybody else and so god rules uh, and so telling another person um well now we you know we got a lot of busybodies in our lives who want to tell us uh, what the truth is though they don't live as though that's the truth but for in order for us to tell another person about the rule and the reign of God, you better know it on your own, especially if those folks don't know God yet, if they've not become aware of the one true living and all-powerful God. And so in order for our lives, even our mouths, to speak this truth to every person and every people that we're in front of, you better know it as your truth. <clears throat> and the reason why that's important is because of all that happens when God is in his rightful place and his rule is recognized. And that's what these four verses are about. Yes, he set the world firmly in place. This is the first part of us recognizing that there is a difference, um, and not just to the psalmist, there's a difference even to us about earth and world. And so how, how is it that the psalmist is using these two uh, words to evoke uh, images in the mind? So when the psalmist uses the word world, he is referring to, or she is referring to, um, uh, habitation not just the peoples but the order of life as people living with other people's uh, systems and the the way the world works it's the order of things and so the world or the order of things is a little bit different than the earth because uh, really the earth is a reference to all of creation so we recognize that heaven and earth are different because of the substance, if that's a fair word to use, because of the substance of them, yet heaven and earth are a part of all creation. So when we get to, um, uh, so, so think about this, this, uh, when uh, uh, in verse, I, forget, I didn't mark them very clearly, sorry, uh, in 11 and 12, in particular, but even in 13, there is a reference to um, creation, uh, the earth. Let heaven celebrate. Let that's not just um, that's not just the highest heaven, like where God lives, where they thought God lives, but um, also the sky, like where the birds fly stuff. So he let heaven celebrate. Let the earth rejoice. Land. Uh, the substance under our feet. Let the sea and everything in it, let the countryside and everything in it, then the trees of the forest. There's so many layers of creation were named specifically um, and were called by the psalmist to uh, exult and to celebrate and to be joyful. Now, I, I do want to point out this in verse 12. 
uh, the word celebrate, well, it actually happens in uh, verse 11 as well. Celebrate there is particularly um, delightful for me because celebrate means to exult in, uh, which really means to jump for joy. Uh, I love it because I have a hard time being still. If the music is good, um, I laugh with my, when it's really funny, I laugh with my whole self and not just with my voice. Uh, and so it's uh, to exult or to celebrate is a reference to, I, I can't contain it, I can't be still. And, and the psalmist is saying to the whole of creation, in response to your Creator's power, wisdom, and sovereignty. I mean, really enjoy yourself. Celebrate and... Okay, so go to the oceans. Let the, um, uh, let the sea and everything in it roar. Roar means thunder. So as a part of not being able to be still, exulting in God. Can you imagine if the entire sea the, the the whole global uh, experience of life underwater began jumping and slapping and splashing and spouting and vocalizing. I mean, uh, seals, whales, dolphins, fish, sharks, all of it. Can you imagine the thunder that would create? but how glorious it would be to now ramp that up from not just the sea, but also the countryside or the fields. Um, there is another uh, psalm, uh, and the number of it is not coming to me right now, but where we talk about, the psalmist talks about the trees clapping for joy. Can you, next time there's a breeze that blows by and it looks like the tree is dancing a little bit, I want you to imagine the entire tree line that you can visualize actually clapping and moving as if they're dancing before the Lord. So the difference between world, habitation, the order of things, and the earth, which is all of, references all of creation. What we get then in uh, Psalm uh, 10, uh, I mean Psalm 96 verse 10, he set the world firmly in place. It won't be shaken. We are talking then in these four verses about an unshakable kingdom. To be, uh, to be able to be shaken means that you're tottering, you're uh, slipping, you're not steady. Uh, and, and the staggering, uh, the being moved is a violent kind of move, like uh, um, slipping towards a fall. And God's kingdom will not be shaken. Why? Why would the psalmist use this kind of language uh, to come against what felt maybe violent uh, in the existence of those who considered themselves God's people? Why would you need to be reminded that God is unmovable and so those things that God establishes are unmovable unless you need to hear a rebuttal against what you are seeing, hearing, and feeling? Psalm 96 then becomes a, a psalm that you and I need to hear. Doesn't it feel like things are shaking um, as if we might be moved in the world today? World as in order, the way we work with one another, the way we relate to one another, but God's kingdom is unshakable. And so, let means to allow which means, well, it's going to happen anyway. And so allowing the earth to celebrate, allow the sea to celebrate, allow all that God created to celebrate is really um, uh, recognition that it will be. You can watch it if you want to, or you can participate. You and I can participate in the celebration already that God's reign is unshakable. The kingdom that he is establishing still is unshakable. So we don't have to worry about what might happen. 
what will happen is that all of creation can celebrate for God is coming. I want us to move to that very last verse, uh, verse 13, because it is the intent and purpose in which God comes and is coming again that we find our peace and our hope. Uh, and so at the very close of verse 12, all the trees of the forest too will shout out joyfully before the Lord. That's the key, my friends. And so uh, I, I'm gonna come back to before the Lord, but let's look at the intent. Uh, because he's coming, he's coming why or to do what? To establish justice. To establish means to like root uh, in, plant or get rooted. Uh, we plant our feet, you know, we establish our uh, balance. Uh, when we're standing uh, in our own bodies, um, and but what we think of the the word justice needs to be corrected spiritually just a little bit. Normally, we think about justice as uh, you get what you rightfully deserve. When you when you are created by, loved by, live in a merciful God, we don't ever get exactly what we deserve but we sure wish it on everybody around us, don't we? But the kingdom that God is establishing even in us and through us, there you go, Dave, thank you so much, Isaiah 55. It wasn't a psalm, it was Isaiah 55. Um, if we're going to live in this established uh, kingdom, then we've got to come to terms with justice being um, this. It's not about you getting what you deserve, it is about everyone having uh, a sense of belonging, everyone uh, having their needs met, everyone having um, a, a voice, everyone uh, counting the same, mattering the same. Our value is not in what we do, who we hang with, uh, what's in our bank account. Our value is in and our identity is in the one who created us. We're all on the same footing. We're all on the same footing. And so justice is about relationship and community. Imagine that. And to judge when God is coming to establish justice and he will judge the people fairly. He will uh, judge the earth. Um, uh, he will uh, work in the world this way. The uh, judge, we boil down to the work of judgment as the only thing the judge does. And, and so judgment then is about uh, conviction or exoneration. It's about sentencing and it's about enforcing um, not just the law, but the consequences of how well we attend or obey the laws but to judge really means to govern and so it's not just about when things go wrong it's about governing being sovereign over every moment of life and the relationships between my life and yours between my people and your people because we are all God's people so justice is about everybody belonging, everybody having their rightful place. Uh, rightful as in not because you earned it, but righteous because God gives it. Oh, can you imagine that kind of kingdom? Y'all, and it's not just going to be at the end of this age when it begins to break through. We are seeing tiny little moments and having holy experiences here and there with this person, with this person surprisingly, about how that kingdom is breaking in even now. So this is the key. I want to go back to this one phrase before. When the trees are celebrating, when they're shouting out, joyfully who knew trees had a voice it is because they see themselves and know themselves to be before the Lord and so there I want you to think of this word audience we think of ourselves 
as the focus of everything in our spiritual journeys when we are still immature in our faith. It's about what God does for us. It's about God what want what God wants for us. It's about what God gives um, us. It's about it's about us, and that is so wrong, my friends. It is about God. We know that we know that we know we are um, secure in God. And so instead of thinking that we are the audience uh, to watch all of creation or um, uh, to watch God perform for us, what if we ha were convicted about this very truth that God is the audience and we are the ones who get to participate in the celebration, the exaltation, the living out of justice. We are the ones who are living for the audience of one. What you say is not just for the people who hear your words or hear your gums flap in my case. <laughs> What if it's not about just about everybody else? What if it's certainly not about you? What if everything we do in this life is about the audience of one, the one who created us, the one who redeems us, the one who sustains us, the one whose reign is already established, but is more solid with every passing moment, the one who causes and is the source of all celebration, the one who is our hope, no matter what our crappy circumstances are like right now, what if that audience of one we see is the one who will forever reign, who is already in charge, in control, and justice will be established because righteousness reigns. That means no matter how worried we are about our children being in school or out of school, about whether we're the ones who are teaching and are the petri dishes who come in to learn from us going to make us sick and then we carry it back to our family. No, no matter what we might be experiencing, feeling, thinking because of this election cycle, what if we were to remind ourselves all the time, better yet, let God's Holy Spirit remind us that God reigns, period. Now that's cause for celebration. May your today, uh, well, uh, I started to say may our today be filled with joy. It already is. It's just a matter of whether we see it and choose it or not. My friend Delee is really good at finding joy because she has determined to look for it around every corner, no matter what. May you and I be so convinced of God's reign that we are looking for joy every single day, especially the ones that stink. Uh, I would love, love to hear when we gather the next time, whether it's related to what I'm saying or not, for you to populate that little uh, chat box there with all of the ways that you were able to find joy today. Who did you find joy with? How, what was happening? And how did you exalt? I mean, so excited you couldn't be still. That is the presence of God within you, my friends, where God's reign is becoming more solid. We will not be shaken. Not this earth, not this world, and certainly not the kingdom of the one who is love. Let's pray. Lord, we are so grateful for this good news and for the psalmist who was bold enough to sing it for the very first time. And we know we have fallen down on our job. We haven't told the nations that your reign is already established and is unfolding before us. And we don't show anybody that either, often because we don't celebrate. We, we are succumb to, we allow ourselves to be moved by the drama and the trauma of this 
world, but you are bigger still. Your love is truer, your mercy and grace are truer, and the life you offer us in Jesus the Christ will not be undone or taken from us. Help us, Lord, find the reasons to celebrate today simply because our God reigns. No matter what we're facing, help us to see with your eyes. Give us a spiritual vision that we've not used before to see joy in even the smallest of things and to not just hold it or hoard it for ourselves, but to let it make us exult, not be able to contain it or be still so that others around us become curious and, be, and become infected <laughs> with that joy. We thank you, Lord, that your very best gifts are undeniable and can't be taken from us. They are indestructible. Give us that kind of joy today, and we will tell all those around us that God is real, that God is true, and that you reign, O oh Lord, starting in our own lives. We thank you already for the joy that will come our way today. And it is in the name of the one who loves us best, even Jesus the Christ, that we pray. Amen. I hope your day is blessed, my friends. Uh, I, if you didn't see the note, we're praying for Wayne today. Uh, and so we're going to claim for him a reason to celebrate after his surgery and that healing is on its way because God is present still. It's true for you too, my friends. Stand firm in that truth. Amen. We'll see you soon.